there's always a geometry in everything I paint. A wild, unstructured geometry where I'm playing off the geometry of a rectangle. An empty studio is a wonderful thing. It's a fresh start every day. The morning sun comes in and I have space, I have light, and I have the day. I have all the gifts I need to get started, to get to work. And I have the terror that what I'll do today won't be any good, or it won't be any better than what I did yesterday. <laughs> and that at the end of the day, I'll do what I have done many times, which is to scrape everything off the canvas that I spent the whole day putting on it. And then the next day, it starts again. It's getting back into the ring with it to duke it out for another day. Because every stroke that I put on the canvas is then there fighting back at me and telling me something about what went before and about what has to happen next. I look at what worked here, what didn't work there, or, no, it's not that rational. I'm misstating it. It's really much more intuitive. The way I look at a sky or at weather, or the way I watch waves on a beach, I'm not thinking or deducing anything from it. I'm not comparing it and analyzing it. I'm watching it as I exist. Then that I would call inspiration, breathing in, taking it in, and then the work is the exhalation, the putting it out again in another form without that inspiration, that intake of wonder. I don't have anything to work from. I follow my impulses. I very often have a very powerful feeling about where on the canvas something needs to go, like a big black vertical down the left-hand side that then turns a corner and comes across the bottom. I begin a lot of canvases that way. And that starts to kind of open the frontality of the rectangle so that it's not front and center. That impulse is making the compositions surge off to the left. And for many years now, in the boat paintings, they have risen upward. Actually, that's been true for a lot of the barn paintings as well. You'll see in many of my compositions, in both barns and boats, that the barn or the boat might be very high up on the composition. The water lifts the boat up, and most of the composition ends up being water. In a barn painting, the foreground is very powerful and important. Very often, I'll have much bigger paint strokes there, and the energy from these strokes, which come very close to you, help to make the space of the land that I'm creating zoom far, far away so that very often there's a sense of being out in the Midwest or on a huge wide open plain, as in Waterfields 3. But there's no limit to where you're seeing. So there, the size of the brush stroke and the greater weight that's near the bottom of the composition brings it towards you. I'm very interested in architecture and in designing it and understanding proportions and dimensions. And so the proportions and the real dimensions of a horse were very interesting to me because, for example, as Ruskin said, what could be more contemptible than a 30-foot pyramid? I thought a painting of a horse that's a little bit smaller than a horse seems like a failure of scale. So I found out that this particular horse was about eight and a half feet long, about eight feet high. So who knew that a standing horse is nearly square? <laughs> I didn't know, and I bet you didn't know either. <laughs> and from then on, painting horses um, became, I think, very much the new architecture within the rectangle, what the figure had been in my early work. And the one thing that they allowed me to do that I had not been able to do with the barns or the boats was gesture. Figures I loved because of their gesture, the dynamism that you see in them. That's why I loved Michelangelo's figures, Raphael's figures. They're in motion. There's 
an implicit gesture in everything about the way they're made. And the same is true for horses. The whole structure of the composition comes from the body of the horse, the angle of it. It fills the rectangle. There's nothing else much there. A little water maybe, or some ground that they're standing on. The water's there to give me the chance to play with reflections or with the horse dipping towards its own reflection or in grazing, the shadows of the horses are being cast on the ground. So there again, there's, there's always a geometry in everything I paint. And that's sort of what the beginnings of most of the paintings are. They're a kind of geometry. A few years ago, a man who publishes books on architectural and landscape design saw a show of mine and said, I want to publish a book of your work. My first response was, oh no, I'm not dead yet. Let's, let's wait. Let's see what I've done 10 years from now. Having the book published made me feel as though all that had gone before was somehow finite, concluded, book closed. Now it feels as though everything that's to come is new and fresh. It's a new direction. So this one's called Surge Left, and it seems an important painting for me because it's all about this turning point where I found myself right now. I discovered that the rationality of the plane and the horizon, which I have loved for years and years and worked with, and it has been the bedrock, literally and figuratively, of so much of my work, didn't have to be the rational horizon. It didn't have to be horizontal anymore. I could tilt it. I could violate it. I could lift one side and send all kinds of energy off in another direction. And when I did that, it all surged left. And I realized that that energy of a surge off the canvas was suddenly the new directional swing that I needed that was part of what I began in New Boats where I said goodbye to making water look like water or even bothering about whether it was credible as such and realized it's credible as paint, it's credible as space and gesture. I think I've been too timid or too something, but now I can't afford to do that anymore. That spirit of beginning a canvas where I'm attacking the flatness, I'm breaking down that monolithic nothing that's there and creating a space for myself that I can get inside and play in and play around it and mess it up and push and push at it and push out the edges of it and up out of the top. That's the spirit that I think I've allowed to be submerged by added layers. In those layers, I was trying to become more specific, more exact, more potent with the painting. But I think now that's not the direction. Or potency is not now a factor of layers which conceal what's underneath, but rather layers that tear open what's underneath, tearing at that tissue, that flatness. I need to work more aggressively. I need to tear into the surface. I need to pursue where it leads with more respect for the accidents, the entropy, the wildness of it. I have to work that way now. 